Hello everybody, this is Katya. I welcome you to a new video presentation. And today I wanted to finish the story that I began telling last time. I realized that I probably went on a little bit too long, and maybe there were some things in that story that were a little eerie, but what I thought I would do today is show and tell. So I'm going to start by telling, and then I'm going to show, and I'm going to be direct and to the point. So, what can I tell you? Um, what can I tell you about what happened in this place where some mistakes were made in the way the earth was graded and so that the streams were altered? Well, I could tell you that eventually there was a flood, a very bad flood there, and it caused a lot of rocks to come down the side of the mountain, almost all the way to the edge of the cabin, right to the edge of the cabin, so there was a lot of damage. I could tell you that I went there to survey the damage, and it was very disturbing to see how extensive it was. So I went there to, dis to look at that. I could tell you about that. I could tell you how, while I was there, I felt that same presence that I had felt many years ago, although it was stronger and there was something angry in the air that I didn't fully understand. I could tell you that I went to the very top of the island, the natural island that my father had seen so many, many years ago. And while I was there, I could tell you that I could see how the grass had been combed flat like green hair by something with a hand almost. I could tell you while I was there, at the very top of that point, I felt this kind of brooding presence around me it's very similar to the kind of presence that you would feel if you walked into a room and somebody was in the room who was very upset or very angry and you could feel that person's anger, that person's uh, consternation and emotional upheaval, except there wasn't anybody else there. There was just the trees and the forest and the nature that I talked about last time. I could tell you about how that evening of that same day, I saw a beautiful heron at the same place where I had stood up on this point earlier in the day when I felt those very powerful lotions all around me. I could tell you how I scattered some breadcrumbs for the heron in a hope to sort of appease this nature spirit or whatever it was. I don't know what it was, but it was certainly something real. So I could certainly tell you that. I could tell you how I was with my mother, she came out, uh, the first, there was a flood that happened on a Sunday, I think it was, or a Saturday, and she came out and we stayed out in the mountains, and all of these things happened with the heron and with the feeling of the anger uh, in the nature all, all around me. That happened in the week after that, and in the following weekend I can tell you about how I woke up very early in the morning and I could hear rain falling, I could, I could hear rain falling, and that wasn't a good sign because the rain, the ground was already saturated. And so, lo and behold, I could tell you that there was another flood, a second flood that was even worse than the first, and that we got out of this place just in time before the floodwaters came rushing back down the island and pushed the boulders all the way into the house and knocked the house, they, they, they knocked the house over, they knocked the windows, they broke the windows, they smashed the glass, and we got out of there just in the nick of time. I could tell you how, when I looked at the water in one of the creek branches, that it was like an angry, living thing. It was almost like a giant snake, and I could feel that same anger all around me again. And so I could tell you all those things, and finally I could tell you that eventually we decided to give this property to the National Forestry Service, because we felt that we were no longer welcome there and it was time to let it go. And since then, they have turned it into a beautiful forest preserve. There are also some ponds that my father had put on this property that overflowed during the flooding, but they were restored. And so now there are a fishing camps there and children and young, and also anybody from the community can come to fish at this place. So I could, I could tell you all of those things. There were things that really happened and things that I really experienced when I was part of this um, flood, this sequence of floods that took place 
a long time ago. Excuse me, I have to fix something on my screen there. So I could tell you all of that, but that's not really the most important thing. The most important thing I have is not to tell you something, but to show you something. And what I will show you is that I feel it's connected to the fact that this place in the mountains, this nature that I've been talking about, was actually, it was alive and it was feminine. And what had happened to it, I believe, is that it had been misused and taken advantage of by overzealous and overenthusiastic men who wanted to build things on it, and it was okay to build some things, but you know, beyond a certain point, it's important to leave nature alone. And so I think that this feminine spirit of this place, whatever it was that I don't fully really understand, this feminine spirit took umbrage at that and became very angry. And I could tell you and show you that if, if I were there, but I can't really anymore because that place no longer exists. After the second flood and the cabin was destroyed and the sheds and everything else, none of that really is there. And yet, and yet, there's one other thing that I would show you, and that is that that feminine spirit, that feminine power, whatever it is, that feminine power is part of me now. I believe that when I was there many years ago, experiencing all these things that happened, I believe that that feminine power, or at least a part of it, has flowed into me. And sometimes I think that Maybe if instead of strewing the breadcrumbs around for the heron, maybe if I had dressed like this, or maybe even if I had been naked, but as a girl in the forest, in this place, between the two floods, maybe there wouldn't have been a second flood. Maybe there would have been just the one flood. But I'll never know the truth of that. I'll never know. But I do know this, and that is that that feminine power Whatever it is, that's part of me now. And it gives me strength, and it gives me courage and confidence to proceed with expressing my femininity in a very gentle, but also in a strong way that is patient and tries to help other people, but also sometimes you have to fight for what you think is right. Sometimes you have to stand up for the truth and for justice and to protect the weaker, and also to protect yourself. So that's how I wanted to end my story tonight. I wanted to show you what I think is part of this feminine power that I experienced so many years ago in this place in Tennessee, which I may never visit again, but I can also take confidence in the fact and solace in the fact that this feminine power is now with me and part of who I am. And so I'm going to try to be true to it, and I'm always going to, as long as I can, try to express myself as a girl, as a part of who I am, without trying to hurt anybody else or tell anybody else how they should live. So that's my story that I had wanted to tell. Thank you for your patience. And this is Katya. I wish everybody a good day. And I hope that we will have the opportunity to talk again sometime in the near future. Bye-bye.